أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا My brothers and sisters in Islam as you know, February 14th has been designated as uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, it, it has a long history, uh, but that history is now largely lost, and what is more common now are the celebrations that you see around you. So how do Muslims uh, respond to this? There is an interesting article on the website about Islam, A-B-O-U-T, Islam, that's something. Uh, on, that, in, on that website, you will find a balanced article written by a Muslim woman who calls for balance in our approach to this. So what is the balance? On the one extreme, she says, that there are uh, those Muslims who want to just follow everything that other than Muslims are doing without any investigation as to what those things are. As an example of this, she gave the case of, or he mentioned the case uh, of some uh, elementary schools in a Muslim majority country where they make the, the Muslim children wear green uh, on what they call St. Patrick's Day. Now, most Muslims do not know what is St. Patrick's Day. So why are we making the children wear green to celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Do we know what we're celebrating? So we have to know what we're doing. There are two words in, in Arabic which are related in the, in the sense that they're both formed of the same three uh, root letters in Arabic. Ayn, Lam, Mim. In that particular order, it's Ilm, which means knowledge. And if we change the order, it's Amal, Ayn, Mim, Lam. Amal is action. Al Imam Bukhari, Rahmullah, emphasized in his uh, book, his Sayyid al Bukhari, uh, that. The ilm comes before the action. You must know what you're going to do before you do it. So we don't just do any and everything just because somebody else is doing it. Uh, we don't want to be more, you know, of not what, what people are doing rather than they themselves. On the other hand, we do not also reject everything that others are doing just for the sake of rejecting. Some people have the idea, this is us, that's them, whatever they're doing must be wrong. Whatever we are doing must be right, and so we choose what we are doing and reject everything that everybody else is doing. No. There's a hadith that says, al hikmatu dalatul mu'min. And the, the hikmah, or wisdom, is the lost property of the believer. And the believer is going to claim that property wherever it is found. We are a balanced nation. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And thus, Allah says, thus we have made you a balanced nation. This is in Surah 2, verse 242, Surah Al-Baqarah. So Allah has made us balanced. We should always find the balance in things, the golden mean. Uh, we don't just accept everything, and we don't also reject everything. We are circumspect. We see and differentiate between what's good and what's bad, and a, sim a singular thing can have some good elements. We don't have to reject the whole thing. Uh, we can accept whatever good elements there is, there are. So one of the things you will hear often is that people say uh, that uh, Valentine's Day is about love. And if you say, no, we don't want anything to do with Valentine's Day, they might get the wrong impression. They might get the impression that Muslims don't care about love and don't have anything about love in their tradition. So let's see what is there 
in our tradition about love. First of all, in a more general way, uh, though that wouldn't be my point now, but just to see the whole big picture, we do actually have a lot about love. First of all, love for God. Second, love for our parents. Uh, love for our children, not necessarily in this order anymore, but love for our wives, love for our uh, brethren in the community, love for our relatives, and so on. So there is definitely love uh, among people in the Islamic tradition. But now coming to the present subject of Valentine's Day, what about this, what people call romantic love? Is there anything like that in our tradition? Well, it is not emphasized because, you know, uh, romantic love can drive people to do things that are haram in our religion um, and, and we want to remain a chaste for marriage. So what is permissible in marriage, impermissible in, uh, before marriage. What is per impermissible before marriage, permissible within the marriage. And so we wait for the marriage. And that's why perhaps the uh, romantic love is not emphasized. But does it exist and is it acknowledged in Islamic tradition? Yes. So let's have some, uh, so look at some verses that deal with that. So uh, Surat, uh, uh, Surat Ar-Rum, the 30th chapter of the Quran, has this interesting verse that says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا from among the signs of God is that he has created for you spouses of your own kind. And he has uh, put uh, mawadda and rahma between you. So what mawadda and rahma? Rahma you already know, mercy. Uh, Allah is a rahman, he is a rahim, he is merciful, he is compassionate, he is kind. Allah has put mercy between the husband and wife as well. Mawadda is explained as a uh, compassionate love. And it's related to the Arabic word wood, which means love. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us uh, that He is loving and kind to He is the Qurul Wadud. He is Wadud. He is forgiving and He is full of loving kindness. Allah has placed the loving kindness between a husband and wife as well. In uh, Surah 2, Surah Al Baqarah, the 187th ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks uh, about the relationship between husbands and wives, saying, You are clothing for them, and they are clothing for you. Clothing, we wear clothing. Uh, we don't wear our spouses, uh, but the, what the clothing does for us, the spouses do for us. They protect us, they keep us uh, safe, they keep, guard us against the outside elements, and so on. So there is a loving and compassionate relationship between the, the spouses. What about people who are not married? There's an interesting case uh, of uh, a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, known as Mughith. Mughith was a slave. We know in the ancient world people had slaves. And his wife was also a slave. But his wife got her freedom. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave her the option, if she wanted, she, because now she has a new status. Previously, maybe she was married without uh, her consent, because as a slave, she did not have that freedom in a society. Now the Prophet peace be upon him gave her the option, so she chose to be freed from her husband as well. So she allowed her that marriage. Now Ibn Abbas related that we could see Mughith following her through the marketplaces. The tears are coming down his, his uh, wetting his, his cheeks and his beard. He loved her so much. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, 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 remarked that, look at the irony that Mughith loves his uh, former wife so much and, uh, and the lady hates him so much. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, then uh, said to the lady, uh, would you take him back? And, uh, and the, the lady said, are you commanding me to do so? The Prophet said, no, I'm just interceding on his behalf. And she said, in that case, I have no need for him. So she refused. But she didn't refuse the command of the Prophet, peace be upon him, because there was no command. He made sure of that. And that shows that if there is just a suggestion from the Prophet, وسلم, uh, the Muslim believer has the option either to go ahead with it or not. But if he gives the command, then naturally we have to submit to his command, being that he is the messenger of Allah. But what this story illustrates is that uh, Murid, a, a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, loved this woman who was no longer his wife. What a 
about prior to marriage? Is it possible that a man may love a woman prior to marriage? Again, we don't emphasize this because we know that sometimes it can lead to um, uh, haram acts. So what might be impermissible in our religion? Uh, touching a person that you're not married to. Of course, the, the innocent touch between persons who are in, in, a, in a mahram relationship, like those who are blood related to you, your sister, your mother, your daughter, your, uh, you know, it, those who are related to you by blood, it, you can touch them in an innocent way, that's fine. Uh, but uh, to touch a woman that you're not married to in, in a kind of romantic way, this now is not allowed in our religion. Also, uh, to be alone with a woman, based on the hadith that the Prophet is related to have said, that when a man and woman are alone together, shaitan is the third one among them. So the being alone itself is not the problem. If there are some exigent circumstances, then uh, you know you can let that pass. But you have to be aware that when you're alone, with when two persons are alone, they're not related to each other by blood, and uh, then shaitan will be a third among them. You have to be aware of that and avoid that uh, situation. But other than that, can the man love a woman uh, that he's not married to? Again, looking into the Quran, there is an interesting verse in the Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, the 235th ayah. In the 235th ayah, we are reading instructions about what happens when a man dies and his widow remains behind. The widow is to wait through four months and ten days. In that period, she cannot get married, and she, not even a proposal for marriage can be put to her. So what if you're interested in marrying that lady during that period of time? The Quran says in this verse that you can use an illusion, a kinai. You don't say it directly, but you can give a hint. So what kind of hints can you give? What's meant by hints? We want to know more specifically. So I read the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi. And in that tafsir, it is mentioned that a man could say to a woman in that situation, you are very beautiful. Or he can say to her, I am ready to get married. So long as he does not say, I want to marry you. He's just talking about himself. I'm ready to get married. Or he can send her a gift. Think about that. I say think about that because we've, we've all become familiar with Islamic societies and that are either one way or another. Some Muslims don't care about anything Islamic. They will do anything, as we say, follow the West, whether blindly or whatever. And that's one extreme. The other extreme, people care so much about Islamic law, they so much want to make sure they obey Allah and obey the Prophet, peace be upon him, that they take things to the extremes. And there will be such a strict separation between men and women, you can't even imagine how people are going to get married in that society. The balance is in between. And this balance is shown in such classical books as our books of tafsir, like uh, that of Imam al-Qurtubi, Rahimullah, uh, reproducing some of the statements of the scholars of old. And this is what the kinds of things that they said was possible. So can a man love a woman before he gets married to her? Yes, it can happen. Some of this happens naturally. It is beyond the control of people. And scientists themselves cannot fully define and explain how this love comes about. But it comes about. Now lastly, I want to uh, mention a hadith, which you have heard many times, but I want to look at it from this angle for the moment. I don't know if you ever thought about it from this angle. It's the hadith about the three men who were trapped in a cave. They took shelter in a cave, and uh, a rock uh, rolled and uh, slid uh, and covered the mouth of the cave due to the rains. So they decided, let's pray to Allah, mentioning a good deed that we have done, asking Allah to, be, uh, on the basis of that good deed, to just move that uh, rock. Each one of them prayed, and each time the rock moved a little, until the third time they were able to get up. The second person who prayed, said, prayed what you know about already. And because you know the Tahmid, Adib, you must have heard it from this very member many times, maybe even from me. So he said, Ya Rab, I love this woman, I'm paraphrasing, more than anyone else. 
And I kept asking her to submit herself to me, but she refused. Then eventually, famine struck. And in that situation of need, she came begging. And so I gave her 120 dinars, if I remember the amount correctly, but that's not the important thing. So she gave her this number of gold coins. On condition that she would submit herself to him. And when he was ready to do that haram act, she said, fear Allah. So he said, Ya Rabb, that's when I got up. And I didn't go ahead with it. But I let her keep the money. And if, if I did this only for your sake, let the rock move. Let the rock move. Now this story is always told, and we, we always focus on this last thing about the zina. Zina, we know it's haram. Adultery, haram. And he avoided the adultery. This is a good lesson for the youth. But we always pass over that part about the fact that he loved the woman that he was not married to. And this was never condemned in this story. It's not like, okay, I loved her and that was a wrong thing. I shouldn't have done that. Ya Rab, so please forgive me. He's only talking about the zina part which he rightfully avoided. And based on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved the rock for him. So this which naturally occurs in a man that he loves a woman who is that he's not married to, this itself is not haram. Provided that he does not act upon that to do anything that is haram. It is mentioned that the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to a messenger of Allah, sometimes some thoughts occur to our minds that we're even afraid to mention. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to them, this is iman, that is faith. That you have some thoughts, how it got there you don't know, and that you're not responsible for the fact that it came to you, but so long as you do not act upon those thoughts and do something wrong, you're okay. In fact, that is a proof of your iman that even though these thoughts are coming to you, whether from the shaitan or some other source of inspiration, you are nonetheless avoiding all of that and you are staying on the straight and narrow and you are a good Muslim. So what does this all prove? All of this proves that love is a part of our religion. It is there in the Quran, it is there in the Sunnah. It is not emphasized so much because we know it leads to haram things. And so we try, if somebody is in love with somebody, to get married. It is related to in Ibn Majah that the Prophet wasallam said, I have not seen anything like marriage for two people who love each other. And that means they love each other before they get married and the marriage is a way of channeling that love. Of course, reflecting back on the first ayah that I mentioned from, from Surah to Rum, we realize that the love is not necessary before marriage. The love can be cultivated and will be cultivated within the marriage. And from my own experience, I can tell you that when I was a young man and wanted to get married, my physical desires were strong. At that time, that was the focus of my attention. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get married. And for that main reason. But over the years, I've grown to love my wife. To a, such an extent that I can't imagine life without her. To, to me, she and me are like united in soul. That is a, what is called a platonic love. It's no longer a physical one that, that says, okay, I want this person for the physical attraction or to satisfy my physical needs. But I want this person in my life because together we are two souls united in love. And so, in closing we can say that when we look at something like Valentine's Day, we don't accept all of it hook, line, and sinker with all of its haram elements, nor do we reject it all, saying that it's a something foreign, not about us, and so we cannot have anything of it. Rather, Whatever is good about it, we can do something about it. So a man, if he was not uh, alert and he was ignoring his wife, maybe at this time he might be reminded and say maybe he buys his wife a flower on this particular time. Or he buys a car. Or better yet, he makes one up himself. And he expresses his own thoughts and reminds her that he still loves her. 
Because sometimes women do want to hear this. And the man says, I, I don't have to tell her. She knows. That's why I'm here, because I love her. Uh, but, but she needs to hear that from you as well. So maybe if you didn't think about it before, this is the time to think about it and channel that love in a halal way. وَأَخِرَ دَوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لَكِ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ In Alhamdulillah, wa ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, wa anna muhammad al rasulullah. Ya ayuhu al-lazina amana tukullaha wa kullu qawlan sadeeda, yashlaq lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Wa ma yuti allaha wa rasulahu faqad faza fawna azima. My brothers and uh, sisters uh, in Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has done so much for us, for this ummah, that this ummah owes to him at least that we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him. Allah in, in his book tells us in the law, and we say in response, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayka ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala wa salli Allah ta'ala ala jameer al anbiya wa al mursaleen والملائكه المقربين وصلاه الرحمن ابو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ومن تبعهم من الدين لا يوم الدين we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya rab oh allah we come to you with many sins ya dal jalali wal ikram we ask you to forgive our sins ya arham ar rahimin you are the most merciful of those who show mercy there's no god but you ya rab there's no one to accept our dua but you we ask you to look into our hearts and see our deepest desires Whatever we wish for, if these are good for us in this life and the life hereafter, and pleasing to you, Ya Rabb, we ask you to grant us the fulfillment of those. Otherwise, we ask you to bring us the good from wherever it is and make us happy with that, Ya Rahim Rahimin. Oh Allah, Ya Rabb, we ask you to heal all those who are sick, Ya Rabb, especially our brother Sidhu, who always prays here, Ya Rabb, Jalal Wal Ikram, give him a quick and complete recovery. And all those who are sick, Allah, Mashkubanta Shafi, La Shifa, Aizah Shifa, Shifa, and La Yulali Rusakaba. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect the entire world from COVID-19, from every other disease and sickness and distress and stress, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, protect the people, protect the animals, protect the plants, protect the environment, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, Allahumma kill the mu'minin wa al-mu'minat al-muslimin wa al-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum al-ammat inna ka sabi'un qareebun mujibu ta'awad. Rabbana la tada'lana dhamman illa ghafarta, wa la hamman illa farrajta, wa la lainan illa fadayta, wa la maridan illa shafayta. ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين واقم الصلاة Please stand up for your prayers and as you do our volunteers will come through the rows to receive your donations for the sake of Allah and for the upkeep of this masjid Please uh, donate generously for the sake of Allah and the Jalb Now this man will reward you And those who are online please uh, donate online by going to our website islaminfo.com Click on the donate button and that's where you can send us a donation for the sake of Allah and I'll talk to you some more inshallah after the prayer. And just to give you an update on the ventilation system that you already donated for, the rough work has already been put in for the two units and one unit is already actually in place but not activated yet. And they're waiting for one more unit to come in from the United States of America and the inshallah will benefit from that uh, uh, new system very soon, inshallah. I just wanted to give you an update on that. Uh, on your way out today, please uh, say a special word of thanks to uh, one of our volunteers, at least, uh, our brother, Tuan Idris, if he is still here. Usually he is here, and he was here earlier today, at least for the first prayer, and then he has to rush off early sometimes to go to work, to where he has his paid employment. But he's here, actually he's here praying in the back. Uh, he's here, rain or shine, Minus 17 degrees uh, weather in uh, in January, and he's, he's there standing on the curb as a volunteer, managing the prayers. And, and without uh, volunteers like this, the brothers and sisters who are working in the background to make this prayer possible, I wouldn't be able to do it. I could, when I'm standing here, I can't control what is happening in the environment, but they do, and that's very important. Brother Tabil is there as well. Uh, who are, uh, you know, these are uh, people who have been serving us for a long time. Please uh, do please say a special word uh, of thanks to them. Jazakumullah khairan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-Falah. 
قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمش عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فيقول ها هم اقرأوا كتابية إني ظننت أني ملات حسابية فهو في عيشة راضية في جنة عالية قدوفها دانية خذوا واشربوا هنيئا بما أسلفتم في الأيام الخالية وأما من أوتي كتابه بشماله فيقول يا ليتني لم أوت كتابية ولم أدر ما حسابية يا ليتها كانت القاضية ما أغنى عني مالية هلك عني سلطانية خذوه فغلوه ثم الجحيم صلوه ثم في سلسلة ذرها سبعون ذرعا فاسلكوه إنه كان لا يؤمن بالله العظيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فليس له اليوم هاهنا حميم ولا طعام إلا من غسلين لا يأكله إلا الخاطئون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا فلا أقسم بما تبصرون وما لا تبصرون إنه لقول رسول كريم وما هو بقول شاعر قليلا ما تؤمنون ولا بقول كاهن قليلا ما تذكرون تنزيل من رب العالمين الله أكبر الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Please uh, recall that uh, on your way out you can continue to donate uh, up to $250 so you can just tap and go with the electronic uh, payment devices Jazakallah khairan, thank you all for coming See you again next week inshallah with uh, your faces smiling uh, even behind the masks, I can still see your smiles around the eyes. May Allah want to keep you smiling in this life and the life uh, hereafter. And as for those of you who joined us online, thank you for being here. And inshallah, I will talk to you again on uh, Sunday. Uh, that's when I usually have my uh, live post. But uh, this Sunday, I cannot do it in the early afternoon as I normally do. I do it late at night. Uh, it'll be 9 o'clock here in Toronto. I know from some, for some of you around the world that will be a bit too late for you, um, but I do apologize for that. It's just that my schedule for this Sunday is unusual, and I hope that uh, after that uh, I will be returning to uh, the usual schedule. So thank you all for being here today. I see that uh, Brother Salmi is here saying salam, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, to all of you, may Allah to protect you all and all of the people around you. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.